Hey everyone, welcome to another video lesson from Navigation Trading. In this video, I want to talk to you about the difference between a short strangle and an iron condor. And the question that we get a lot from our members is, when do I trade the short strangle and when do I trade the iron condor? Because they are very similar trades. And that's what I want to break down. And so let's start with a little bit of a comparison and then we'll jump onto the trading platform and show some actual examples. So to start with, when we put on either a short strangle or an iron condor, we do both in a market neutral fashion, meaning we don't care if the underlying stock goes up or down, we just want it to stay in a specific range. So that's the same for both. Also, when we enter these, we're entering with high implied volatility. So we wanna sell a short strangle, we wanna sell an iron condor when implied volatility is high. So that's the same for both. Now's where we get into some of the differences. First off, the risk. In a short strangle, the risk is undefined. We're using naked options, which sometimes can make people nervous, but I'll, I'll show you what the difference is and why that's important. And then with an iron condor, the risk is defined. So you know exactly what you're risking on the trade when you enter it. Next is the probability of profit. When you enter a short strangle based on the way that we teach in our courses, the probability of profit is typically around 70% or higher with a short strangle, where the probability of profit is a little bit lower with the iron condor at about 60%. So you have a higher chance of making money with a strangle than you do an iron condor. Next is the profit potential. When you sell a strangle, typically you're collecting more credit, giving you a higher profit potential. With an iron condor, you're collecting less credit, so your profit potential is a little bit lower. As far as where you can trade, uh, short strangles traditionally have been uneligible for IRAs. However, Tastyworks has come out with the ability to trade naked positions in your IRA. So if you do have Tastyworks as your broker, and they are one of our preferred brokers, then you can trade them in an IRA. And then iron condors, for the most part, across any broker can be traded in an IRA. Next is our permission levels. So when you apply for an account and you open an account at a brokerage, you have to get permission to trade certain levels. With a short strangle, you have to have what's called tier three permissions to trade naked options. And with iron condors, you just have to have tier two permissions so that you can trade defined risk spreads. And lastly, with short strangles, you're going to use a larger amount of capital, whereas with an iron condor, you can place smaller trades that use less capital. So those are some of the differences. Let's go to the platform and tie this all together to make sure it makes sense. So I'm going to look at two different underlying symbols. The first one we're looking at is SPX. And if you're in Thinkorswim platform, we like to use our Analyze tab because I'm a very visual person and I know a lot of our members are as well. So it helps kind of introduce the concepts and helps you grasp the concepts a little better. So what I've done here is I have put together a short strangle to begin with. And you can see down here, I've checked on just the short strangle box. So that's what we're looking at. If you look at the break evens, we put on the price slices at the break even point of the zero line. What you'll see is that in this case, the probability of profit, if you held it all the way to expiration, is a little over 63%. So it's a little lower than the 70% that we talked about. But what I want you to take away from this is that you've got a profit potential with one contract of $2,660, which you can see in the teal colored in the little black box over here to the left. So remember that number, 2660, that's our max profit. Now, if we uncheck the strangle box and we check the iron condor, now you'll see what happens. Uh, a couple things. One, we've got defined risk. You can see these wings on either side, meaning if price explodes to the upside or crashes to the downside, we have this defined risk amount. The profit potential, as you can see, if you're still looking at that teal number down in the bottom left, is $735. So our profit potential is less than a third that of a strangle. So our, our profit potential is lower, but what we get in return is that defined risk. So if you're nervous about undefined risk, you can define the risk by just buying these wings and trading an iron condor. The other thing I want to point out is Look at our price slices, they're way out here. However, we have to move them into the break-even points 
for the iron condor. So let's just move those in and see what that does to the probabilities. You can see that went from over 63% probability down to 55. Okay, so remember I told you, you have a lower probability of profit with an iron condor, whereas the short strangle has a higher probability and a higher profit potential, but you're looking at undefined risk. So there's always a trade-off between risk and reward and it's not that there's one that's better than the other. A short strangle is not better than an iron condor. It's just dependent on what you are looking to trade from a capital usage, from a defined risk, the type of trading account you have, and so forth. The one last thing I want to show you on this example is if we right click on the iron condor, hit confirm and send, it'll bring up this box showing what our buying power effect is. So it's going to cost us $2,269 uh, of buying power to put on the iron condor trade. So let's exit out of that and let's look at what the difference is with the short strangle. So if we right click, hit confirm and send, with one contract for a short strangle, we would have to put up over $49,000, okay? So I don't care if you're trading a six-figure, seven-figure account, trading a short strangle in SPX, which is currently trading at nearly $2,900, it's just really not a, an efficient use of your capital. So if you're trading extremely high priced underlying symbols like SPX, then you're typically gonna trade an iron condor, you're gonna define the risk, as well as it's just a more efficient use of your capital. So those are the different things you look at, the price of the symbol, your trading permissions, the probability of profit, your max potential profit, your defined versus undefined risk, and those all are the things that you wanna take into consideration when choosing which to trade. Let's go to one more example, and let's take a look at EWZ, which is the Brazilian ETF. Now look at the difference in price of what these symbols are trading at. SPX is trading at nearly 2,900 at the time of this recording, and EWZ is trading at a little over $32 a share, okay? So that's a, a massive difference, right? So let's take a look at the Analyze tab here and see what the difference is. Let me change this to match up with our expiration date, which is 1020, so we get some accurate readings. So let's look at the Iron Condor first, and what you'll see is that we've got a probability of profit of about 68%, so that's good. We've got our defined risk wings, as you can see here, so the max risk with one contract is just $136. This can be done in really any size account, small accounts, large accounts, it doesn't matter. And again, we're just looking at one contract. So we've got a defined risk max loss of 136, a max potential profit of $64. Okay, so the lower the price, the symbol, the less capital you're gonna use and the lower uh, potential profit you're gonna have as well. Now let's look at the short strangle. So if we click on that, what you'll see is our break-evens have widened out. So we need to move our price slices to get an accurate reading here and move it over here. And then what you'll see is now look at our probability of profit. It jumped up to 74%. So remember on a short strangle, you have a higher probability of profit. And now look at our max profit potential with the teal number down here in the box is $130. So now we have a much higher profit potential, about three times the credit, about three times the profit potential with the short strangle versus the iron condor. And of course, with that comes undefined risk, which if you've taken our courses, you know that there are ways to mitigate that risk and minimize that risk, even when you're trading undefined uh, strategies. Okay, so lastly, let's do the same thing as we did with SPX. Let's go down and take a look at what the buying power would be. Let's start with the short strangle. We can right click, hit confirm and send, and you'll see for even for a short strangle with undefined risk, the buying power effect, the amount of capital it takes to put this trade on is a little over $326, okay? So not, not too bad. Now, of course, if we go to the iron condor, it's gonna be even less, we hit confirm and send, and the buying power it takes is $161.50, okay? So you can see the difference between the two, there's not a right way or a wrong way to do this. The only thing you gotta make sure, is it an efficient use of capital? Are you collecting amount of credit that you want to trade? So for example, one of the things that we shy away from is trading iron condors on these low price symbols, because if you look, I mean, the max profit we can make with this on one contract is 64 bucks. 
Remember, with a, an iron condor, it's four different legs. You've got four different options you're trading, so you got to pay commissions on each one of those as well, so it's a little bit higher transaction cost. Whereas a strangle is only two contracts, so you're paying less transaction costs entering the trade and exiting the trade. So you want to take that into consideration and understand if you're going to trade an iron condor, just make sure the amount of credit you're receiving is worth the risk and the transaction costs involved with the trade. So those are kind of two different extreme examples. One of a very high priced symbol at $2,900, one at a very low priced symbol at $32 and the difference between the two. So let's go back to the slides and recap this one more time and kind of give you some takeaways, give you your decision making criteria for choosing a short strangle versus an iron condor. One, do you prefer defined or undefined risk? Are you okay with that unlimited risk component or are you more comfortable with defined risk? If you're more comfortable with defined risk, you wanna go with the iron condor. With undefined risk, you wanna go with the short strangle. Is it the best use of capital? So if you're trading a high priced underlying like SPX or Amazon or something that's, that's very high priced, you're probably gonna use an iron condor because it's just a better use of capital. But on some of these lower price symbols, you may opt to use a short strangle because you're not using too much buying power and you're getting a better credit. So the symbol price comes into that account as well. And lastly, what type of account are you trading? Do you have the capability to trade undefined risk if you're in an IRA versus a margin account? Uh, if you're in an IRA, a lot of times most brokers only allow you to trade iron condors and you can't trade undefined risk or short strangle. So it depends on your account type as well. So that's it. I hope that was helpful in helping you determine which is better for you, a short strangle or an iron condor. Talk to you in the next lesson.